Hello, everyone. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> you, you know do. us, right? Is Diana Sanchez. Diana Sanchez. Our infamous supervisor here. And I'm sure you've seen me around. And uh, we are, I'm going to turn this over to Diana to begin with. And what we're doing is really anxious to hop on the airplane and head towards Manizales. And in preparation for that, we were putting together an assess our assessment protocol for this uh, our work with our clients that we'll be meeting down in Manizales. So Diana, maybe you'll start to and talk a little bit about an overview of the the protocol, and then uh, I'll demonstrate a few things, and Diana will demonstrate a few things. And perfect. And so we are going to begin on our assessment that's definitely driven by relationship base. So as soon as the clients come in, we want to establish a relationship, really get them comfortable um, to start beginning our assessments. Um, we have a couple of tasks. We are going to, just let me look here. We are going to begin with just letting them get to know us. Um, make sure you bring a map. We can also have Google Earth and maybe just giving them the locations of where we come from, um, establish that relationship, and then we are going to move forward with our for assessment and then transition into our PIJ task which Dr. Moses will definitely elaborate more. Um, in regards to the cell four, some of the subsets that we are considering to definitely um, assess are censuses, direction, censuses, forming censuses, um, directions read, um, and recalling, uh, recalling censuses verbatim. And then the last one is um, looking at the paragraphs that's on the cell for Spanish assessment, blowing that up bigger and encouraging the child to read that. Again, depending if they're able to read. And from that, assessing comprehension through the questions that are um, that derive from the protocol. And I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Moses so he can begin demonstrating the PIJ task. There you go. Okay, see. Uh, we have a few uh, tasks that we'll be uh, doing. Uh, we'll have several of them, and we'll, depending on the age of the client um, and the amount of involvement that the client seems to have in terms of disability, we'll make a decision as to which ones we'll do. We have a couple of traditional PIJ tasks and a couple that are some non-traditional game-like ta tasks. The idea is in the task basically is to, uh, we're certainly looking at reasoning and problem solving, but in a, uh, specifically in the area of language, we're looking at uh, the ability to have a conversation, use a cause and effect, um, make cause and effect relationships, uh, procedural, comments and te temporal relationships and basically conversation over in context of a problem solving situation. So one of the traditional Piaget tasks that we were going to uh, include in our protocol is the uh, co uh, conservation of continuous quantity task. So we need to make sure we have some Play-Doh around or something we can play around with like that. And the task operates like the way we do it is this with the child, or it could be an adult as well, you take the uh, Play-Doh or clay and break it into two parts and give it to the client and say, make sure you m create them so that you make them so that there's exactly the same amount of Play-Doh in the two uh, circles or balls that you make. Let's make two balls. And make sure that there's just exactly the same amount here. You do it, and I would give it to the client, Double check, tell me if there's the exact same amount. Okay, now watch what I am going to do. And what I'll do, I'm gonna push this down, uh, put this here, yeah, see that? I'll put this here, and I'm gonna take this one here, and I'm gonna do this. See what I did? I made a snake. In any event, I have, I'm wondering now, is there more Play-Doh here? Or does the snake have more Play-Doh? Or is it still the same amount of Play-Doh? <clears throat> and it's interesting to see what the client would say. 
Now, if the, either way, especially if the client says there's more here, I'm going to say, well, here, you know what I'd like you to do? Take the snake and make it back into a ball and let the, the client do this, make it back into a ball. <coughs> now, is there, how, how much Play-Doh is here compared to here? Is it the same amount or more or less? <coughs> if the client conserves, they will say that when it's a snake, they'll likely say, likely say that, no, well, now there's more because it looks longer and it just has that perceptual quality to it. Uh, and then when you re recreate the circle, they will predict that it is, well, now it's the same type thing. Uh, if they're conserving qu continuous quantity, the client would uh, recognize that even though it looks different, it's the same. Now, I sometimes try to, <coughs> of course, I'm speaking English, and this will be done in uh, the client cell one, which I'm assuming is Spanish. But uh, what I do is I'm not such a nice person. So what I often do when I'm just, just, I hope I'm kidding. But what I do is say, if the client says there's still the same amount, I would say, uh, I might try to confuse the client a little bit and see really how sure that client is of his or her answer. So I would say, well, but look at it. It's, it this one is only here. This one's here. It definitely looks like now you, there's more Play-Doh. Am I right? And see if the client will argue with me or really tr explain to me that, you know, even though it's still the same, you just changed the shape or something like that. Following me? Well, in any event, that's one of the tasks. We'll also have the, a conservation of liquid quantity, uh, but we, I will not demonstrate that here. It's similar, though, with two glasses with exactly the same amount of liquid in them, tall and thin. And then a third container, which ha is short and fat, and we ask the client to pour one of the containers of liquid from the tall, thin container into the small, fat container, or wide container, and again predict, now that it is in this other container, is there more or, or the same amount? Following me, or less. That's that set. And another one of the traditional Piaget uh, assessments that I thought might that I thought might engender conversation. I'll put that back up so you see my face. I'm not sure that interested to see my face, but here it is. Is the conservation of uh, conservation of number, or uh, and and that one here is you um, make two rows. It should be really of seven coins. I was thinking this would be fun to do with a client or interesting to do with the clients using U.S. coins and also having the Colombian coins because I'm not sure if they, they've seen the U.S. coins or not. They might be interested and we might have, a, have dimes, maybe nickels, a few different types of coins. And then take, you have to have the same type of coin in the two rows. You put two rows out. Seven would be better, not five. Uh, it's more... Uh, I'm not sure there's any particular reason for that other than it's a little more traditional. Seven coins. Yes, the child count. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Is there the same amount in each uh, line or more here or more here? I would presume the client would say the same. That's the baseline to begin the interaction. And then what you do is spread out the coins and say now take that same seven but spread them out and say now is there more uh, are there more coins here or here or is still the same amount and you watch what the client does if the client starts to point tries to count right away you know the child is not conserving that's the term that's used conserving number meaning keeping recognizing that it stays the same because they wouldn't be counting they just say well it's a stupid question basically if they think there's more, or, or if you don't let them, I usually say, no, don't count, just guess. What do you think? More, or blah, blah, blah. More or less the same. Let them guess. And then I'd have them, if they guess more, I would have them re, re or, or, organize them again so that they line up and say, well, now how, are they the same or more or less, blah, blah, blah. 
And then the next thing I would do is take one and make a circle out of the, the seven circle. And say, now, are they the same or more or less? And then I also typically say, if they say the same, similar to what I demonstrated with the other, with the other uh, conservation of continuous quantity task, I say, my best friend told me that when you make a circle, there's actually more particularly if they give the right answer, and I know that sounds like, that's not nice, because first they were, if the child was correct, then I'm trying to trick that person, but I'm really trying to see if they have stabilized that st the ability to, with the, that relationship making their, their, or their reasoning that they're demonstrating, that they're applying, or if it's still in process of kind of development. So if I can, convince them to change their mind and and sometimes you'll see the child do they'll say it was the same say one two three four five six seven then they go over count to to come into agreement with my effort to confuse them <clears throat> this process by the way the conversation you have with the client is uh, I use that the term critical exploration you're trying to explore their thinking about the material these tasks but also, uh, we're looking at the language again, the conversation they have, their and uh, see if they're using simple content form interactions in these tasks, or they're able to use more complex content form interactions to support their reasoning. And the kinds of conversations, whether they can carry on a conversation on the topic, back and forth, over, um, through several turns a number of things you can get out of this. Everybody following me? Yep. Thank you. And then the two, uh, quickly, quickly, I'll demonstrate the two games that I've, we, I was thinking game type. They're called infralogical tasks. These are logical tasks, the traditional ones. Infralogical. One is the game called Tiddlywinks. At my age, I know what Tiddlywinks are because I played it even as a kid. I don't know if anybody plays Tiddlywinks anymore. <laughs> Piaget probably did, because it's w one of his books in, the, in Grasp of Consciousness, I think. It's a 1976 publication. And Tiddlywinks are the game where you take a container and you take your little plastic chips, we'll make sure to have plastic chips, and get into a game with the child. He, your child, she would have a set of chips, and you would have a set of chips. Could be a few kids around playing the game. The idea is to make it pop into, pop up into the container. And you could uh, always play around with that to see if I push it here, you could ask the child, is it gonna work? Where do you think I need to push it, pop it to make it work? Following me, different angle, that it's gonna pop off in a different way. You have a sense of how they're thinking about um, the pressure and, and the reaction, the re response to that pressure that's put on vector, something that might be called vector force. But the other problem is here, I'm doing this on, the, on this table, everybody. See that, this table here? And look, well, I have an option. I can play on the table or I can play on... Okay, so I'm gonna turn this back now to Diana, who will talk about the self-component of the assessment. Great, so how are you guys? It's great to see you. So again, there's two types of protocols, right? Ages nine to 21, and then age five to eight. Folleto de registro. Um, so there's a couple of subsets that we are considering doing. Um, the first one is, following directions with spatial concepts, conceptos, y siguiendo direcciones, okay? This is one of the subtests. The second subtest is recordando oraciones, so recalling sentences. The third subtest is formulaciones de oraciones, so forming sentences with a target word. Um, with this subtest, we can also assess writing. So this would be a really good good subtest to definitely administer. 
we will also do Entendiendo Parafos, so understanding um, paragraphs. Our goal is definitely to make the paragraphs bigger so that the child can read it himself. So we are going to analyze this informally um, so that we can also analyze literacy skills. If the child is unable to read it, then we can also assess comprehension by reading it to them and then um, posing the questions that are set by self for. And that is it. We do not have to do all the subtests, but these are a handful that we think are very important to do um, if we have the time. And again, depending on the client, their needs, and what is important to really assess. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Moses to finish this off. Okay. okay, thanks, Diana. We're very much again looking forward forward to uh, to hopping on the airplane and taking off. Uh, we have a meeting, I think, coming on Monday. Uh, I don't think. I think I know. And uh, we will. Uh, any questions about this? You can bring that up there. We will make sure you bring your signed, uh, notarized forms. And uh, we have. Uh, a, set up the we're setting up the insurance component of the material that you'll be prepared with and uh, we will fill you in on uh, information uh, FLSA information on uh, on Monday so uh, I just I also wanted to mention by the way I think one other component of the evaluation is the te the frog story as an option mm -hmm. to uh, have them to uh, read or to work with that wordless picture book. So uh, we're we'll looking forward to seeing you and uh, to, again, going off on our adventures. See you on Monday. Take care. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. Ciao. See you.